You've got to find what you love. Navigate to the online stanford.edu, the graduate education clicked in. There are three options credit based, which means after you complete the graduate certificate, you can transfer up to 18 credits to master degree when you apply. Click the graduate certificate, choose the computer science, click in. On the top, it lists out all the basic information you need, like how much it costs and the academic calendar of Stanford Online and the roadmap of this certificate. Scroll down, you see the courses you need to accomplish in order to get the graduate certificate. Three required courses, they are compulsory. After that, an elective course. Scroll down to the bottom of this page, you will find where you can apply this program. Suppose you sign up a Stanford Online account, navigate to the application section and it lists out all the materials you need. I'll explain one by one. I categorize these materials into three sections. You need to write the statement of purpose, you need to fill out the, your personal information and your residency status. Also, you need to fill out your professional experience and education background. The fifth one is the exam monitors. I'll explain a little bit here. The exam monitors is the person who is responsible to deploy the exam, like paperwork exam. During the exam period, the exam monitors will receive an email from your course teaching team. He or she is responsible to deploy the quizzes you need to finish within maybe two to five hours. After you finish the exam, he or she is responsible to collect your paperwork and send back to Stanford. The next part is just one click. The drop down option, you choose which certificates you need to apply. The third part is the documents you need to upload. For example, you need to upload your diploma of bachelor degree or if you have a master degree, you also need to upload. Here is a side note here. In order to apply the graduate certificate, you at least have an bachelor degree. So if you don't have a bachelor degree, you cannot apply the graduate certificate. Next, you need to upload a scanned copy of your transcript, like how much GPA you earned during your bachelor and your master degree. Third is the identity materials, like your passport, this kind of information. There's only one last step to perceive your application. That is, you need to select one course and pay the bill. One unit equals $1,456. One unit means you at least have to spend three hours per week during the courses. So for example, if I apply a five unit class, the workload of my class is three multiple five, that's 15 hours per week at least I have to spend on. So most of the graduate certificates, there are 12 units or 16 units, that is this amount of money you have to pay. Remember, there are up to 18 units you can transfer when you are applying the master degree after completing this graduate certificate. In the meantime, you need to pay $170 on the first application. The timeline can be subdivided into two periods. First is the enrollment period. The second is the quarter date. During the enrollment period, you only need to do three things. First, you have to submit application. Second, you need to enroll a course, and then you pay the bill. The submit application part is just one time, which means after you are enrolled in a graduate certificate, you don't need to apply again. You just need to enroll a course. After the enrollment period, suppose you got received by the program, you can enjoy the study and exam during the quarter dates. Suppose I want to have a class during April 1st to the June 12th, I need to enroll a course and pay the bill during this period. There are four quarters in Stanford, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. You can apply the courses accordingly. Here's the roadmap of the graduate certificate I applied. As you can see, there is a lot of flexibility here. You can enroll in autumn, in winter, in spring, or in summer. This example only demonstrates you finish the graduate certificate within one year, but you are allowed to finish the graduate certificate within three years. 
For example, this is my plan roadmap. I don't want to finish this whole graduate certificate within one year. I want to give me some flexibility and buffer during each courses. From last year, in the autumn, I applied CS103 and then I finished. And during this winter, I skip this quarter. So during the skip, I'm not an active student. By active student, it means your account will be freeze and you don't have access to the Stanford email and etc. But I want to have a course in the spring. So I will enroll during February 5th to March 17th. Then I take the course in spring from April 1st to June 12th. And then I want to have a rest in the summer. So I skip this quarter. Then I want to take the CS 109 in the autumn. And then I want to have another rest during winter and finish my last class in the spring. This is just my plan. Please notice some courses are not available across the whole year. You can go to the website and check the availability in order to design your roadmap. What led you to pursue a computer science program at Stanford, especially coming from an architecture and urban design background? Well, I got tired of hearing words like, you don't have a formal computer science degree, so we cannot offer you this pay. Or, oh, you don't study computer science and you won't get this idea straightforward or something. So it's frustrating and hits my pride. Plus, I want to earn more. Coming from my background as an architecture student and architect, my first job in the startup was paid based on an architect's average salary, not a tech oh, no! salary. So that's why I want to study and join this program. How did you discover the Stanford non-degree program? It starts when I was learning C++ through Stanford CS 106B online courses. The lecture was fantastic. It explains complex ideas and terminology in a very intuitive way, like C++ and C's pointer. These concepts are not easier for beginners. In the meantime, the CS106B has tons of practical assignments for the students because I'm a firm believer that learning something by doing something is a great approach. So after the class, I just Google and have some research about Stanford Online and I found this program. Why did you choose it over others? I can take up to three years to complete this certificate. I'm only considered as an active student when I'm enrolled in a course, which means it gives me flexibility. But most importantly, the effort I put in now will count towards something bigger in the future. I can transfer up to 18 credits towards a formal master degree, which is a big plus. Can you provide a brief overview of the curriculum and any special modules? There are mainly three categories. One is graduate education, one is professional education, and the last one is free online courses. As you could guess, the cost varies from low to high. Let's say you are interested in machine learning. In the graduate section, you get office hour, TA support, lectures, human review assignments, exams. But in professional education, you might just receive pre-recorded videos and auto-graded assignments. If you enroll a free version of machine learning, you may only just get the pre-recorded videos and no assignments at all. The program I enrolled is in the graduate section, which can be also split into two subcategories. One is graduate degree. Another is graduate certificates. Both of them have the same instructors. You have same classmates from LA or from Boston, but the certificate option doesn't offer a formal master degree at the end. There are several certificates like cybersecurity, computer graphics, foundational knowledge, and artificial intelligence, and etc. To complete one certificate, you typically need four courses. Three of them are mandatory, and one is elective. Taking my foundational certificates as an example, I have to complete three compulsory courses like CS103 for mathematical foundation, CS161 is algorithm, CS107 is about computer system, and the last one is an elective course you can take automata theory and maybe also probability theory. Check out the link in the description below for more details knowledge. What resources, lectures, readings, projects does the program provide? Looking at CS103, 
which I have enrolled, is roughly 10 weeks courses with 28 lectures. Let's picture what a week looks like. You have lectures on one day, Wednesday and Friday. By Friday's night, you should submit the assignments from last week. The assignments is usually a mix of formal proof writing and coding assignments. Besides from the lectures and assignments, there are also three exams. Yes, three. Final exams, two midterms. What's most important? There's no break during these exams, which means you have to prepare the exam. In the meanwhile, you have to finish the assignment. So to sum up, that's 28 lectures, nine assignments, and three exams. Quite a lot, huh? What support systems do you have in place for when you encounter difficulties? The support system is primarily the instructors and TA, which I think it is a major benefit over the free version and the professional version. When you are stuck, you can ask help from the TAs or from the instructor on a forum-like website called Esther. In the meantime, you can queue up for an office hour, just like other graduate students or undergrad students. You can attend the office hour from Zoom. That's quite convenient. How intensive is the course, and how much time do you need to commit weekly? Honestly, it's quite intensive. Stanford's system works like this. One credit equals three hours work per week. So my course is five credits. So that means I have to spend at least 15 hours per week. But I give myself a little bit more buffers. So I spend 20 hours a week since I'm working too. I have to split the time into workday and weekend. So in workday, I spend two hours per day and that is two times five, that's 10 hours for workdays and 10 hours for the weekend. You can imagine, I don't have any fun and any entertainment at all. How do you plan to balance work and study, especially in a demanding field like computer science? Balancing work and study is tough. There's no oh, doubt. Man. However, I have two advice for this. First, use the Pomodoro. It is a lifesaver. It helps you to stay focused and efficient. Speaking of study, it's about quality, not just quantity. Therefore, using a Pomodoro technique and the alarm will keep you efficient and focus on what you need to do. Second, planning. Planning ahead is crucial. I want to say life is unpredictable. I remember there was a mistake for me during this course. Among one of the assignments, I procrastinated. I think I had maybe just five or four days to complete the, uh, the assignments. So no big deal, right? But then, bam! I got COVID and it was struggle. Therefore, you need to plan ahead and do ahead. You not only need to plan ahead for the assignments, you also need to plan ahead for your work. That say, know when it is call it a day. Setting a quitting time each day will keep you engaged and prevents burnout. And this is a tip I pick up from Barbara Oakley. And trust me, it works. Can you share a particular moment or achievement you're proud of during your early days in the program? There's one moment that really stand out. Picture this. It's Saturday morning and I hadn't started on an assignment, which is due tonight. I was stressed, anxious, and hesitate to even start. But after some deep breath, I set up Pomodoro technique, as I mentioned before. And then I shift my focus from the fact that I need to accomplish this assignment tonight, then to what I can accomplish in 25 minutes. Remember, and society and deadline is the worst thing when tackling math problem because some math problem and math proofs they're not obvious you need to think you need to calm down and think thoroughly so by the afternoon i maybe finish like five pomodoro i finish the whole assignment and i feel great and wonderful at that night and guess what at the end of the course i got an a this is so so huge for a person coming from not technical and from not computer science background maybe i should create some content and share what and how i did so stay tuned how do you think this program will keep up with the fast-paced changes in technology 
That's a great question. I chose the foundational certificates for a specific reason. It's not just about filling my knowledge gap in computer science. I also believe having a solid foundation is a key to adapt in today's ever-changing world. Like Professor Sipser, the author of Theory of Computation, said, specific tech knowledge quickly becomes outdated, but fundamental skills last. That's what I'm focusing on. And this idea and this perspective is not just in the tech world. The entrepreneur Lai Naval in his podcast, How to Get Rich, he claims that we should learn more about foundational knowledge. So if you look at the curriculum of computer science of undergraduate program like MIT and UC Berkeley and CMU, you see these courses are crucial and are still playing an essential role in the program. What advice do you have for professionals from non-CS backgrounds looking to get into computer science? First, interest. That is the most aspect, I think. If you have no interest of it, you cannot bear with it any longer. Second, dive. The dive means jump to the sea right now. Go, just jump into the sea right now. Try whatever you want to solve in your daily life and work using coding. Why is that? On the one hand, this can to test your own interest, whether you can like it or not. On the other hand, because as an employee, we usually don't have enough time like graduate and undergrad student to learn something new. But what we can do is to apply computational thinking and coding to our daily work and daily life. So transit from something you familiar to something you're not familiar, the formal computer science. This is my journey. I'll make a formal and thorough videos about this in the future. What resources do you recommend for those considering a similar transition? There are plenty of great resources and for learning computer science. Many of them are free. For me, I think a great place to start is the introductory course by Robert Sajewik in Princeton. This course is in the Coursera and has auto-graded assignments, which is very good. Finally, how can viewers follow your journey and learn from your experiences? I appreciate your favor. Maybe you can hit the subscribe button. I'll share with you more on this in the future. Thanks.